Our first faculty meeting was held a few days later, and it seems as though he wanted to test my mettle. He said, now I want you to teach physics. I said, yes, sir. Chemistry, yes, sir. Biology, yes, sir. Uh, uh, I want you to, to uh, start a baseball team. I said, yes, sir. I want you to start a football team. I said, yes, sir. And I want you to start a band. I said, I say, the wheel. Presenting the Gremlin College Tiger Marching Band. The band is directed by Conrad Hutchinson, Jr. Your drum major is Herman Kemp, assisted by Albert and Christopher Robinson. Gambling State University Marching Band is number one in the nation. No other unit has appeared on nationwide television as many times as the Tiger Marching Unit. They played the first Super Bowl in 1967. They performed in the Super Bowl in 1975. They have performed in Africa once, Dallas ten times, Houston eight times, seven times in New York, three times in Washington and Los Angeles, twice in Chicago, once in Pittsburgh, Detroit, Cleveland, Kansas City, Portland, Oregon, and Hawaii. The Tiger Band has rocked crowds in the Astrodome, the Louisiana Superdome, the Los Angeles Coliseum, the Rose Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, Texas Stadium, Yankee Stadium, Tulane Stadium, Three River Stadium, and Robert F. Kennedy Stadium. When they complete their upcoming date in the Detroit Dome Stadium, they will have played in every Dome Stadium in the nation. If that isn't enough, a trip to Japan this year is in the making. No doubt about it, the Grambling University Marching Band is number one. The unit began its historic march to worldwide fame in 1926 under the direction of University President Albert W. Jones, only the second leader the university has ever had. It achieved that goal under the direction of Conrad Hutchison, only the second band director Gramlin has ever known. And Hutch, as his name is called on occasion, rules the group with an iron hand. Since Hutch took over the reins in August of 1952, only two fights have occurred. All involved were expelled from the band. That is one of two things Hutch does not stand for. The second is tardiness. If you're late for a trip, no matter what the destination is around the world, you don't go. And that includes the trip back. And more than likely, we'll never see the same band on the field twice. Some are actually members of the band a full two years before they get a shot at a halftime show. And those that don't cut it are replaced. Hutch philosophy is, if you can't look sharp and be sharp, someone else can. <laughs>
Conrad Hutchinson is a driving force, driving for perfection in his work and perfection in the men in his organization, on the field and off. Some say it is harder to make the Grambling Band than it is to make the also world famous football team. What does Hutch say? Well, probably the falls of thinking about the physical aim. And of course, the physical uh, training and so on is a result of our concept of what we think a band should look and sound like. We'll march a parade of seven miles at 180 beats per minute. The entire time you see a grambling routine on the football field, the band is moving and playing. And the physical training, we feel, could be a little rough. To Hutch, it's all in a day's work. To members of the band, it's a grueling grind that has all the markings of a Marine basic training camp. Before each and every practice session, the band takes calisthenics. Then they go to work. It takes about 18, eight-hour days to get the members ready for their first show. And if you don't get a step, you just work until you do. Because when one mess up, the whole band mess up. Let's see if you can do it again. With me, with me. One, two, ready, move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two. Hey, hold on, hold on. Put a little movement into it. All right? A little soul, a little movement. It is tough, but there is not one member of the band that would trade any of it. To become a performing member of the band, it is to be a part of the elite, and the pride is worth every ounce of sweat. When Dr. Jennings came to my high school, Ringo High, and I uh, had career day, and I was interested in the band then. And during the summer, I got a letter from Conrad Hutchinson uh, saying that I was able to get a scholarship to come to Grambling. To me, it meant uh, we learned discipline, I feel that it'll help me in the future, you know, maybe when I get a job, you know, and all the other responsibilities in life, maybe I can look back to the way we were taught, you know, to be on time, stuff like that. And if you had this to do all over again, would you do it again? I wouldn't change anything. We worked long, hard hours, even late at night in the stadium, not in the stadium, but in a practice field where there's no shade or anything. It's really, it really gets tough out there sometimes. Well, ever since I was in elementary school, I always wanted to be a member, you know, living right in Monroe, not far from Grambling. It's very rewarding, very. Would you, if you had to just do it again, would you try it again? Yes, I will. I will. It was quite an adventure, but I will.
The band is part of the package, Grambling Football and Grambling Marching Band. They share the limelight 50-50. They have been mobbed by ecstatic fans in New York and had their elbows rubbed by Hollywood's most popular stars. You might recognize some faces. Muhammad Ali, Red Fox, Flip Wilson, The Fifth Dimension, Roosevelt Greer, and even Rodney Allen Rippey. The list could go on and on. The Grambling University Marching Band makes their appearances mostly on that talent and charisma, but they could not do it without a lot of public relations and promotions. That part comes from Colin Nicholson, noted as one of the best in the business and has the credentials to prove it. Because of Nick, the band is so well known that halftime concessions suffer at some football games. The fans stay to see the band and the halftime show. That was the, the first American Football League championship game and the Gremlin band uh, had been invited out uh, to San Diego by the Chargers. Uh, and during the halftime, uh, to everybody's surprise, nobody went to the concession stands. They all stayed to watch the show. And of course, we thought that this was most unusual, and I think it reflects the, the kind of uh, interest that fans have generally uh, for the Gremlin unit. Nick doesn't have any trouble finding the places to go. The band is in such demand that many times they must simply turn down the invitations. The other half of the package is Grambling football team. All you have to do is look at pro football and count the number of Grambling grads there to tell the success of that program. The two go hand in glove. The two teams have their jobs to do on the field. Very few others in the nation are quite as successful. The odd part of it all is that the football team rarely gets to see the band perform at the half, but they can hear. The team and the band are partnership and an inspiration to each other. Without the band in the various cities across the country, we kind of feel lost. And uh, we like to know that they're going to be with us. Uh, we think of them as a part of the package. We think of them as being a recruiting agency. We think of the band as being an inspiration to the youth. And we all know that uh, the many people who follow us in the various stadiums across the country, that they come to see the halftime show, the pregame show, and the postgame show. And uh, we feel that this means so much because uh, a lot of the young kids today, they don't really play football. We noticed uh, one year in New York, we had a chance to see part of the parade. And uh, just hundreds of kids just followed in Harlem. They just followed the band. And uh, we know that uh, a lot of these persons uh, will go on to probably be interested in music. We know we get a lot of students. and. Uh, we know how the fans react now. Contrary to what people think, we do see a little of the halftime show because we usually get back just before they're coming off the off the field, and we see a lot of the post game show. No, no, I'd like to just give you this quick story. We were playing at Southern one year, and at halftime, Southern was leading us, and uh, it was almost time to come on, and 
I told one of the trainers, look out and see whether the bands were off the field and whether we could come on. And the guy heard me, so when they opened the door, he said, yeah, the bands are off the field. And our band has won its game, now you come on and win your game. <laughs> After the football season, a special show is presented by the Grambling Band for the football team they've supported all year, so the players can see what they've been missing. The relationship is rare. It is a relationship of winners. In 1972, the Tigers unit won the Battle of the Bands in Dallas, Texas, officially becoming the best band in the land, not to mention three trophies and $10,000. The men involved with the Grambling football team and band are competitive. Each year, they take an entire university student body and staff for an emotional ride, complete with times of joy and times of pain. And the spirit runs deep through the whole institution, through everyone that is or has ever been a part of Grambling. We may not be number one in football team every year, but the band is number one so far, as long as I've been here. They're fantastic. I've never seen anyone get a crowd moving the way they can. And everywhere it has been, it has been an ambassador of goodwill. People love music. People love good music. Every chance that I get, I uh, watch them on television. Every time I come back, I make a visit to the band room and uh, talk with band members and Mr. Hutchison, Mr. Wally, and the uh, other faculty members that uh, were involved in the band. They are a particular source of pride to us. And of course, there is no harder working organization on the campus. But when all is said and done, an education is the most important part of Gramlin's existence. If the grades come out poor, you come out of the band. That is the first and foremost requirement making anyone eligible for a place in the band, scholastic achievement. Yet being in the band is an achievement in education itself. It is an achievement that very few students anywhere in the world attain. In January of 1972, Gramlin's marching band represented the State Department and the President of the United States abroad. The group accompanied Mrs. Richard Nixon to the inauguration of Liberian President Walter R. Talbot in Africa. It was an unprecedented accomplishment for any American university band, and President Nixon would later refer to the performance as magnificent. <laughs> But there is really no place like home for men and women all over the nation who spend their most important years of their life on the campus. For the band members, of which only 50% are music majors, the experience is total. Conrad Hutchison is the authority, but his students carry the responsibility. They present musical arrangements, field routines, and ideas to the director and his staff, William Wiley, Charles Turner, Linwood Seals, and Edward Goodwin. 
The band itself does the work and carries the responsibility under the watchful eyes of those who teach. They look forward to its coming every year. And thousands and thousands and thousands of men, women, and children of all races line the streets. Many students have come to Gramlin uh, by listening at the band and seeing the band perform and being filled with that spirit to want to be a member of the Gramlin State University family. How long has the band been in operation here at the university? I, I'm a, I am a bit modest about this, but I started the band in 1926. It had only 17 pieces, but, but even then we were a proud group. And when Mr. Conrad Hutchinson came in the early 40s, it, he br brought it up to the unit that it is now, where it is a world renowned. You have many requests throughout the country for, for the bands performing in other countries and other towns and so forth. And how do you make this schedule and how do you keep up with this kind of thing? We don't schedule it ourselves. We simply get the uh, uh, requests from different agencies to appear. And if they are able to take care of the expenses, we go. It is an education for the young men in the band. They get a chance to travel. They get a chance to meet other people. I wish you could have seen them in Portland, Oregon last year when they marched into the large marketplace and thousands and thousands of people came around to hear them play. And the f men, women, and children followed them down the streets. They immediately became attached to them and became a part of this unit. This we were very proud of. And even now, we get letters from people in that area who speak of the uh, of the band and, and its quality and uh, what a good job that it's doing and how it makes people know about the university. There is no place like home on the campus of Grambling State University, USA. They sweat, work and strive to give the people what they want and they are proud of their right as Americans to do so.
This marching band is the best in the business. When the Superdome needed a band, the Grambling University Marching Band was selected. The band appeared in the first Super Bowl back in 1967. They were so impressive then, they were invited back in 1975 for an encore performance. The Grambling Marching Band has played in every major sporting city in America. They have performed in every dome stadium. They have inaugurated presidents in Africa and jazz in Japan. No other university marching band anywhere in the world is so widely recognized or so widely respected, and the reason is simple. The Grambling University Marching Band is the best in the business. I always like to refer to our band, uh, first of all, as the greatest band in the land, and secondly, as the goodwill ambassadors for Grambling State University. Uh, I'm very proud of that band, just as an alumni and the faculty and the staff, because of the impact that they've made uh, on the nation, and not only the nation, but uh, internationally, uh, with the type of performance that they've been able to, to give throughout uh, the country. The band provides so many educational benefits that students can use in later life. Not only the skills that they get from their training in music, but the discipline, which is a primary quality needed in life. It is one of the greatest uh, recruitment vehicles that we've had, we have here at the university. So we're very proud of, of, of our band, and we're proud of Conrad Hutchison and the leadership that he has provided uh, over, over the years uh, for the Grammar State University Band. The band is rich in tradition. Only two men have directed the unit. The late university president, Ira W. Jones, was the first, and for the past three decades, Conrad Hutchison, Jr. has had the reins. Hutch is the man. He has set the standard of excellence in the band, and you either meet those standards or take a hike. True. Uh, you never see the same band uh, twice during the football season, believe it or not. You will see certain band members all of the season. Uh, this last year, when we ran this 300-piece band, we had roughly 380 people around. Uh, if one person, once he makes those company fronts, if the person isn't able to remain there, he's replaced by another. And the replacement becomes a permanent resident. <laughs> In 30 years, only two fights. All involved got the boot. Hutch demands proper conduct by each and every band member everywhere, every day. And that means taking both your job in the band and your job in the classroom seriously. On the practice field, you show up on time. If you're late, you might be an ex-band member. On the practice field, you work hard, and that means battling both grueling heat and bitter cold. Working on a routine 18 eight-hour days, doing it until it's done right. And it is Hutch that oversees it all. The man takes a personal interest in each member, making sure the band member performs on the field and in the classroom. That's where it all is, Ernie. We believe in student leadership, and we have a training program. We put certain responsibilities. For instance, the music is handled by the section leaders. Each section has a leader who is responsible for seeing that that music is executed properly. If he has any problems, then he comes to a member of our very small staff and asks for assistance. Uh, the dance committee puts the dancers together. They are responsible for seeing that the dancers are taught, that they're executed. The marching and the formations are under the drill sergeants. Remember, our band is divided into squads of eight, and each squad has a drill sergeant, and those are the people that are responsible for seeing that the movements, as planned, are executed. I couldn't, couldn't begin to uh, give enough praise to our student leadership and to the, that program.
they do the dance routines. We simply are using the latest dance steps uh, around the country, the pop dance steps. What we do is simply review what this dance committee, which is made up of people from at least five members from various parts of the country. This is so we can get the latest dance steps in, in the routine that it may be happening, let's say in California, uh, combine them with those that are happening in New York. Uh, this dance committee simply brings the routine in for approval so that we can make certain that the band will be able to dance as well as play. As tough as it is, the band members take things in stride. They know that if they don't show well in a halftime show, they will be watching someone else in their place during the next one. But they understand the work now is an investment in the future. Grambling State University have enhanced my knowledge of study in taking pride, responsibility, and most of all, leadership. The performance I enjoyed the most was being able to perform with the stars of Tokyo, Japan, and being in the big city of New York for the first time, performing with the Grand State University Tiger Marching Band. I came to Grambling because of its commitment to excellence. Grambling is constantly improving its old programs to upgrade to the standards of technology today, and constantly adding new programs to compete with the world also. A GSU band member must be responsible in his studies, as well as dedicated to the band. I've traveled all around the world in the military with my father. I've decided that I've wanted to settle down for a while and see how it is to settle down in one community. And since I've been here, I've really learned a lot. And so far, Gramlin has taught me quite a bit, and I hope to learn a bit more out of it. I was in the Gramlin State University Marching Band from the fall of 1977 until I graduated in May of 1980. The most exciting memories I have of the band are the cities we traveled to and the performances we gave, the stadiums we played in. But the details of those performances, the dance steps, uh, the music, the crowds, the hot weather, the cold weather, these all seem to fade with time. What remains with me is the influence the band has made on my life. Perhaps the most incredible part of it all is this. Better than 50% of the band members are not even music majors. They are where they are because it is an honor to be a member of the Grambling University Marching Band. And you can see the pride when the band takes the field. The Grambling Band is one half of an incredible partnership when teamed with the highly successful Grambling Tiger football team, they form a force to be reckoned with. It's been a little better than 10 years since the Grambling Marching Band went to Africa. 
an unprecedented trip for any American university marching band. There they played at the inauguration of then Liberian President Walter Talbot. Since then, the group has continued to set president, including three trips to Japan, with the most recent having an odd twist. The band accepted an invitation to perform during halftime at the Mirage Bowl in Tokyo, Japan. That in itself is not so strange until you realize the Grambling football team stayed home to play Southern University in the Bayer Classic. The halftime performance would be for a game played between Clemson and Wake Forest. And their bands, like the Grambling football team, stayed home. The trip to Japan was incredible. A mammoth amount of work for everyone in the